All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, yesterday we covered a story which legitimately shook me. The Democratic Senate candidate running in the state of North Carolina said in all seriousness that he might not take an FDA-approved vaccine for coronavirus before the end of the year, implying that the Trump administration could rush the process for political benefit. Cunningham's comments was just the latest strain of a deeply conspiratorial strain of elite liberalism, which is running amok through this country, best exemplified by vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris saying the same thing a few weeks ago. Let's take a listen in case any of you missed it. I will say that I would not trust Donald Trump, and it would have to be a credible source of information that talks about the, um, the efficacy and the, and the reliability of whatever he's talking about. I will not take his word for it. He wants us to inject bleach. I, no, I will not take his word. Now, as I said yesterday, if there was a GOP Senate candidate saying this or a GOP vice presidential nominee, you can rest assured every single media reporter on the planet would have their heads explode simultaneously. Brian Stelter would do a special report. Rachel Maddow would break into special coverage. But that's not what happened. Instead, the high church of elite liberals came right to Cunningham's defense. And instead, we saw the opposite. Brian Butler, the editor-in-chief of Pod Save America Bros outlet Crooked Media, immediately defended Cunningham, saying, quote, journalists have a straight-up choice to make. Falsely portray people who say they would not blindly trust a Trump October surprise vaccine as anti-vax cranks, or truthfully portray Trump as seeking to intervene in the vaccine approval process to boost his election odds. And as of this writing, I went ahead and checked. It was not covered negatively by either CNN or MSNBC. And to the extent it was covered at all in the mainstream media was this gem from the Washington Post about how the real villains of the coronavirus vaccine are actually the Republican base, who polling shows say are skeptical of taking a vaccine. Now, Cunningham and Kamala Harris's comments come at a complete and create a strange horseshoe theory of politics in which anti-vax, anti-government kooks on the right find themselves in near lockstep with elite liberals with such extreme Trump derangement that they're actively campaigning against public health in the middle of a pandemic. The state of American trust in scientific institutions is dire right now. New polling from the Kaiser Family Foundation saw a 16-point drop in favorable re- favorability ratings for the CDC in the last several months. And several new polls show that only a slight 51% of Americans would trust an FDA-approved vaccine for a variety of reasons, spanning Republicans, independents, and Democrats. How did we get to such a dire place as a country? Well, a news item caught my eye yesterday, which pretty much crystallized it for me. Scientific American, one of the country's premier outlets on science affairs, decided for the first time in its 175-year history to endorse Joe Biden for president. Again. This is one of the nation's most important science outlets, despite explicitly to venture outside its realm for the first time and insert itself into a roiling political debate. You might say, yeah, Sagar, but you can't deny that Trump has done a terrible job with coronavirus. I don't deny that for a second. I probably say it here three or four times a day. But the part that Scientific American leaves out of their endorsement is that Governor Andrew Cuomo, a Democrat, had one of the worst outbreaks in the nation and condemned many elderly Americans. Americans to death with this errant order on nursing homes that in early February, the Democratic Speaker of the House was walking the streets of San Francisco, encouraging citizens to go out and shop in Chinatown for fear of racism, not a deadly disease ravaging our streets. Were any of these facts found in this so-called scientific decision? No. Scientific America's decision to pursue this endorsement underscores an element of a leftist anti-science which has pervaded coverage this entire pandemic. When lockdown protesters took to the streets, asking that somebody take their livelihood and attempts to provide for their family seriously, they were scoffed at, derided as disgusting bigots that are putting their elderly grandmas at risk. But then lo and behold, the George Floyd protests erupt across this country, all of a sudden, every public health expert in America is on MSNBC saying, actually, protests are all good, folks, because racism kills more people than coronavirus. That's not science. It's politics. Worse, it's woke politics, perpetuated by the college industrial politi- the college industrial complex, which is rampaging unchecked throughout our scientific institutions. Just days ago, 
Independent journalist Christopher Rufo uncovered a plot at the CDC in the middle of a pandemic to undergo a critical race theory training called Naming, Measuring, and Addressing the Impacts of Racism on Health and Well-Being of the Nation and the World. In other words, a college graduate seminar based on pseudoscience, this course would have ended up encouraging CDC employees to join, quote, anti-racism collaboratives with eight collective action teams and join campaigns to make scientific publications anti-racist so they can influence policy and legislation. Again, this is what the CDC is focused on and spending a lot of money on in the middle of a goddamn pandemic where we do not have a vaccine. Is it any wonder Americans don't trust them? This underscores the point I want to get across. If you're a leftist out there and you don't trust the vaccine, the Trump administration on a vaccine, I legitimately do not blame you. But do not overlook the politicization of science and important institutions within your own ranks, because soon there will be a presidential election. And soon you could have Joe Biden at the United States government. And the explicit politicization of science could come around to split America even further into two. And I think the story there, Crystal, for the scientific American thing in particular, was that when you make it just all about Trump and you do not talk about any of the other dramatic failures among Democratic governors, then you're just, you become a hack. And look, pundits are hacks. I don't blame them right. for being hacks. They are doing their jobs. But the explicit politicization, the injection of so much of this, and the lack of honesty throughout the protest made it so a huge segment of the right will not trust any public health institutions. And these elite liberals hate Trump so much that they are willing to basically go to war against, at least in the short term, against the idea of a vaccine, which is how you create, it's like I said, this like strange horseshoe theory. Yeah. <laughs> where you've got these, like, there's always been, like, a lot of anti-vaxxers, you know, anti-gov kooks who are like, I'm not putting that in me and my kid and all that. And I understand where the fear comes from and all that. But then you also have now, you have people who are supposed to know better, right? right? And who, in most of the time, are, like, really sanctimonious and be like, how can you not vaccinate your children? And now they're like, no, I'm not I'm not taking the Trump vaccine. Yeah. And all I of do, that. And I do want to say, and we've played it here a couple times, Joe Biden had a good response. He had a great response. Of everybody who was like, look, Trump is a mess, but yeah. yes, I would take the vaccine vaccine, which is the right answer, right? It's honest and it's truthful. And yet you're still yes. being a, a leader in what is a public health emergency right now. You know, there's a couple things that are interesting here. First of all, I don't even disagree with Scientific mm -hmm. American on this because I think, I don't think the two parties are equivalent, especially when you have like climate change ravaging the world and, and exacerbating wildfires and hurricanes. And you've, the response on coronavirus coming from Trump has been atrocious and not based on science. We've played the clip earlier from talking about herd mentality yeah, instead of herd immunity, great. which is like terrible anyway. Well, like, it's scientific, all, just not great. All of yeah. this, well, not <laughs> herd mentality yeah. is not scientific. <laughs> anyway, um, the troubling part is when everything becomes tribal and partisan, no one trusts anything anymore. And that is why it's dangerous when you have public health officials saying, coming out and taking sides with in the protest yeah. and saying, you know, racism is more important. Look, I, I actually agree, I agree. But Which the minute that you start taking sides, then you become partisan and people don't trust that you're shooting straight on just like, here's the science, here's the facts, here's the reality. And that's part of how we end up in this really, really troubling place that we're in right now. There's a, a longer history here that I was thinking about while you were talking, which is when Kamala Harris and Cal Cunningham and, and other people, other liberals come out and basically say like, no, I wouldn't take an FDA approved vaccine. Because look, they're propagandizing to be like, oh, it's just going to be like a right. Donald Trump vaccine, like yeah. hydroxychloroquine. We were doing your yeah, podcast, right, which yeah. is going to drop today together. And you're right. with like a Trump stamp yeah, on yes. it. That's Trump, not what Trump we're, branded hydroxychloroquine. That's not what we're, we're talking about. <laughs> FDA approved vaccine. And so when you say you're not going to take that, what you're essentially saying is I do not trust the federal government yeah. anymore, period, full stop. That's a victory for, for decades of conservative ideology, really starting with Ronald Reagan with this idea of like the scariest words in the English language are from the government, I'm here to help. And their attack on the federal government basically leads to this moment where people like 
Cal Cunningham and Kamala Harris are like certifying their victory in this regard and saying, no, they're right. You can't trust the federal government to do anything anymore. And that's part of why this is also troubling. And then, of course, the data speaks for itself. Half of America says they wouldn't get the vaccine. And that is a horrific place that we found ourselves. What in. are you going to do? Half of America doesn't get the vaccine. Seriously. I mean, what are immunocompromised going to do? The elderly, they're just going to have to stay at home. Half of America, yeah. half of people can't get a vaccine yeah. or are not going to take a vaccine. Yep. And same thing. When I mean, this is the most important point. As you said, if you only trust government whenever your guy is in charge, it's over, people. That's it. I mean, especially on terms of national defense or vaccine or something like science like this in particular, it's done. And that you can see that actually in the data about what we're talking about, about uh, with election outcomes. One third of people who, who support Trump say they will not they will not accept a, a legitimate victory by Joe Biden. It was 43 percent for Trump, I and, think. Oh, yeah, 40 something percent. And then 60 something people who support Biden say they will not accept a Trump victory as legitimate. That goes to the heart of the legitimacy of an institution like the CDC or whatever. And when Scientific American and the CDC and, and the public health people all start going on TV explicitly starting to take sides in a very hot political moment, then that's it. You can never put that back into the bag. Yeah. That legitimacy you had with the American people. Look. The CDC had like an 80 percent approval rating before this whole thing began. It's almost in the 50s right wow. now. Again, you want to live in a place where half the country. Let's, you know, so another pandemic strikes in your lifetime. You gonna trust the CDC? I'm not. And here's right. the thing. You may believe that the American people are gonna pick and choose of like, oh, well, once Trump's out, then we're gonna trust all these institutions. It doesn't work that oh. way. I mean, we've just seen this over decades, like before Trump, when you have that consistent assault on the federal government and its credibility, and you have people saying they don't trust it and they don't trust the institutions, and they become degraded. And, and yes, under the Trump administration, he's in many of these posts, put people in charge of the agencies who are like actively undermining and opposed to those agencies. But that just erodes the trust in the institutions over time to the point that you get to a moment like this where it's like, yeah, we want a vaccine, but also, by the way, it's not going to be what we want it to be because so many people are not willing to yeah. take it. And a lot of leaders are leading them in a bad direction. That's right. All right. I'm looking forward to your radar next, Crystal.